Welcome to another episode of MageCast.il. Last time we covered how to install and configure BHAT and Selenium, as well as running a very simple example where we search Wikipedia. Dan North started the BDD movement and calls BDD a communication and collaboration framework for developers. He proposed that we should write the scenarios using given, when, then. Note these scenarios are not written by a single person. They're a collaboration between stakeholders, product owners, developers, QA, etc and they represent the behavior of a specific business process. However, we are looking at the feature files, so if you imagine a full collaboration process has happened on this beforehand, then we're all cool. So we know in the imperative style, we need to describe all the elements of the user interface. That would be all the steps that are required to actually complete our scenario. In this case, add an item to the cart and see if the top cart increases. So let's create a scenario heading and we'll say, given I'm on product page or product one.phtml, which is the actual product page, when I click, and this is the actual item size, which will be a drop down, and I click what gender we want, so we know it's a male t shirt in this example, and I click add to cart, so add to cart is going to actually add it to the cart for us, then our assertion then I should see that the heading cart has one item in it. So we're using CSS selectors to actually describe all the way through. So let's take a look what's wrong there. So we're using a lot of CSS selectors, which doesn't really make much sense when we're talking to non-technical people. And we're also only trying to check that the top cart gets increased by one item. Yeah, we're having to go through lots of steps. So when I click, when I click, when I click, we're still dependent on the UI. So let's try and refactor it. Let's remove the CSS selectors. So when I click a small clothing size and I click male gender and I click add to cart. So now we're converting the CSS selectors to be more sentences. It's actually a sentence that we could read back to a business person and we could understand it. And let's try again at making it a little bit more simpler. Now that we've lost some of the CSS selectors, let's see how we can reduce it down again. So this time we'll start with our scenario and we'll say add item to cart and check quantity. We'll start again with given I'm on the product page one. This time we'll think more about the sentence. So when I add a small men's item to the basket, then I should see that the top cart is increased by one. So again, we've reduced the number of steps taken and it actually reads more like a, a sentence, an actual piece of behavior that we could expect to see. Now let's take it one step further. So add item to cart and check the quantity. So when I am on, or when I add a small men's t-shirt, because we know it's a t-shirt that we've, we're testing this behavior on. So when I add a small men's t-shirt to the basket, then I should see the top cart has increased by one. As you can see, that's the declarative style that we've just gone through there. It's more aligned to how user stories in the agile sense are described. So we describe the actual behavior in a conversational style and it actually reads a little bit more better. Oh, it reads more like English, which is what we're after. We want to achieve. We're not testing all the individual elements of the UI. Previously, I showed the raw mint context. However, you might have noticed that there is a mint context that can be used. This context is great for people who are getting started with BHAT, but it has many issues from my perspective. Let's take a look at both its strengths and its fallings at the same time. So how cool. Look at all of the step definitions that are provided for us. I visit, I do this, I do that, I click link, I see. This will save so much time. And correct, it can save time to use the mint context if used correctly. The problem that I faced when using this context came from changing the scenarios to match the context file. It became too coupled to how I implemented scenarios in BHAT. Sometimes we want to debug our running scenarios. Now we can resort to the old methods, of die, vardum, printar, etc. 
However, one amazing extension I found recently is by Kieran McNutley, and it allows us to step through a running scenario. Let's use our example from the last workshop to debug the Wikipedia steps. Slight disclaimer though, if you haven't watched the first video, it's probably a good idea to head over there first to get up to speed. So if we head over to GitHub and Kieran's GitHub page, we can see all the information about the extension. So if we copy the installation required dev line and insert that into our composer.json file, we then want to go back to the terminal and run composer update to make sure that our vendor directory is up to date. Open up the hat.yaml file and add the extension. Note that the tilde indicates that no, there are no options configuring for this extension. Now if we run bhat from the command line, let's see if we have any new options. So we should see that we've got the step through extension. Let's now run search with the new step through to see how it works. So as we can see, pause after every step to aid debugging. So if we run bhat this time, once we've remembered to start the manager, so we've got Selenium running in the background, and we run bhat with the step through command as per the documentation. We should see that Firefox opens up and it runs our first step definition. Now in bhat though, we can see press enter to continue. So it's paused on the first step. We go back to the command line. Once we've inspected the element, we can then move on to the next step. This is really helpful where we might be debugging selectors or where we're tightly coupled to the UI just to make sure that we're not missing a crucial step definition or an area of the, the page that we need to understand or see. So this is looking good. However, all we've been doing so far is running the entire suite. That's okay if we only have a single scenario, yet what happens when the test suite grows? Well, we could take this time for a coffee break. I'm sure we can get that past the managers for a few weeks. Or we can look at some ways that we can run only certain parts of the feature files. Let's start by adding another scenario so that we can see the difference. So we'll just make up a scenario, so test scenario. So given I'm doing something, when I do something else, then I should see. We're not going to write any step definitions for this, it's just so that we can actually see bhat working and how we can actually tell it to run selectively what we want. So running bhat this time, we're going to see our initial successful scenario passing. It's going to go through all the steps that we already specified and have seen a few times before. And then we finally see all the missing step definitions for the second scenario that we created. So it's not really ideal having both of them running. We nearly, really want to just focus on the new one. So how can we run only the work in progress scenario? Well first off we can try running just the single scenario using the line number. So we run bhat with the full path to the file colon line number and the line number to the line that says scenario, our scenario definition. So this time we've only run the first scenario, which is great. But let's take it a step further in our feature file. We might want to group the scenarios. We might want to mark some as work in progress and some as complete. Normally we would use tags to represent behavior, or even what session managers to use JS, for example. However, let's add work in progress to the incomplete scenario and we can see how we run each one on their own. So there we're running bhat with the hyphen hyphen tags work in progress or complete. And you can see each scenario continues to run but only in isolation. And we're running the entire test suite with looking for those tags. So bhat looks for each feature file and once it's passed them, looks to see if there's any tags that it needs to process on the scenarios. So that's pretty cool. So as you can see, only the scenarios that match the annotation are executed. The benefit here is that multiple scenarios can match those tags and they'll be run. This applies to all feature files unless you specify a specific feature in the file. So far, we've seen how we can run all features, now we can run individual features, and now we can group by using tags. Now let's take a look at suites. So what is a suite? Well, a suite represents a group of concrete features with all the information on how to test them. Recently, I've been using suites to test the core API and another full web interface. Let's take a look at how we can configure suites. We start by editing our bhat.yaml file and create a new definition of suites. 
We then say that we want a web feature and we're passing the paths to the feature that relates to the web. So we're going to say base path features web and we want to say what context can actually run that. In our case, we want to create a web context. And we've also got a second suite, which is the core features or the core API. So we create a new paths, which is the base path features, and we'll change that to core. And the context that we want to run against this suite is the actual core context. So once we've created our configuration file in bhat.yaml for suites, we can go back to the command line and run bhat init, init which is short for initialize. And that's created as a web context.php and a core context.php context files. This is where we can create those individual contexts, very similar to how we created the initial feature context from the very first scenario that we ran through. And we can see that we've also got folders core and web where we'll actually place our feature files. So instead of just placing them in the root of the project, we'll actually create them in web or core. So let's create a web.feature file and we'll give it a feature and um, some information, we'll just copy and paste for the time being. So you can see we've got a specific web scenario with a single scenario that we want to execute. So if we run it this time and we actually pass in the suite that we want to run, so our suite equals and it's web or web features. And we can see that we've not actually got any step definitions that can satisfy or execute that. But we've already wrote the step definitions. So what we can do is say, or pass into the context parameter that it'll accept web context. So run that feature file against the web context, but also run it against the feature context, which is great for where we've actually got implementation in the feature context that we want to run against many different feature files. It's quite a powerful and really good tool to use. As you can see this time when we run bhat and we're saying that you can find the definition in the feature, feature context, it's actually running the feature file as we'd expect as per the previous examples. So we haven't really started to build anything real yet, but I hope by now you understand how to install bhat, selenium, how to run bhat, the different types of story writing techniques, how we've got imperative and how we've got declarative, a little bit about the mint context, how it has got great power, but also that with great power comes great responsibility. Use tags, how to run suites, and a little bit more of the deeper configuration that can help keep the test suite tidy. Next up, we're going to create a simple application so that we can actually see how we can put all this into work.